This is the PR Podcast, a show about how public relations helps you tell your story to the world. We talk with great PR practitioners who have the skills, creativity, and just plain savvy to get their clients noticed. Now here's your host, Jody Fisher. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the PR Podcast. I'm Jody Fisher. Thanks for joining us. Well, have you got yourself your PR Podcast plug yet? You know, we say this all the time. We're PR people. We're great at promoting our clients. And I don't know about you, but I'm awful at promoting myself. I'm just the worst, right? People ask me, so who do you represent? And I'm like, deer in the headlights. What do you do? I'm like, uh, uh. It's the same thing I used to have when I used to I used to play the piano and people would say, go ahead and play. I would know hundreds of songs and then you sit down, play a song. And I don't know what to play. It's the same thing, right? So we're making it really easy for us PR people to promote ourselves. Send us a PR podcast, your PR podcast plug. Uh, DM on Twitter is great, but you can reach out on any of the socials. Um, tell us your thing that is your passion project. It's your e-newsletter. It's your cool website. It's your great TikTok channel. It's you play the guitar, you play the piano, you something cool, right? Tell us what you do. Let us plug it. Maybe it's an award you won. Um, get, let it give us an opportunity to give some love to you and to share with the rest of the PR community the great things that you are doing. So reach out to us on one of the socials and get yourself a PR podcast plug. We'll mention you at the top of an upcoming show. Now let's get on with our show for today. We have a great guest. Heather Kelly is the CEO and owner of Next PR, an award-winning full-service public relations firm. With a passion for masterful storytelling, customized campaigns, and efficiently maximizing resources, she has led smart, effective strategies and campaigns for hundreds of companies across industries uh, on any budget. Heather is a recipient of the PR News Top Women in PR Award. I've never won an award and you have. Heather, welcome to the PR Podcast. Well, thank you, Jody. It's a pleasure to be here. It's the cobbler's kids have no shoes is probably your challenge, right? You're busy winning right. awards for clients. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly right. to... I actually, I won <clears throat> one award like way, way, way back. I'm also, not, I don't put myself in for awards. I'm like, I just, yeah. too much going on, right? Right. <laughs> The PR person, right? So, so tell us a little bit about first about yourself and about Next PR. You are a CEO and owner. I am. I actually started as an intern in the 90s. So I um, started as an intern, worked my way up through the agency, became CEO in 2015, and then um, bought the company in 2020. So we'll actually That's be amazing. Next PR. We're celebrating our 45th birthday this year. So we've been in business for 45 years. Um, and just, you know, we're passionate about telling stories and helping businesses make impact. Working your way up through a company all the way to that CEO chair has got to be an interesting journey. Can you, can you help outline sort of, um, yeah. And, and typically people jump, right. They jump from place to place to place as sure. they rise, you've stayed in the lane and just kept going. Tell us about that journey. You know, uh, it has been a fun journey and I always tell people, like my secret to success is leaning into what's hard. So if it were clients that were challenging, I'd be the one to raise my hand. If it was something I'd never done before and it made me nervous and have butterflies, I was the one to say, oh, let's try it. So, you know, I think doing that over, over and over time and time again um, has helped me build my career and be able to take it from intern to CEO. Really, really great stuff. Do you have... Um... Any advice for some young people who are starting out who may, you know, are saying to themselves, hey, you know, I'm at the front end of my journey, but someday I want to be in that chair. Other than yeah. leaning in, is there anything you did maybe along the way? You know, and I think it's it's relationship building. It's relationships with clients, with your colleagues. PR has historically, right, always been one of those. It's a stressful place to work. It's a hard, it's a hard life. Um, but it can be a lot of fun too. You meet awesome people. And if you really take the time to make the human connection, it makes all the difference in your success. Yeah, I find that the longer I do this, the thing that becomes most valuable are the relationships that I build along the way um, with clients, with reporters, with editors. Um, and I dial back the clock to my days as a reporter myself. You know, I'm pitching my friends. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It's kind and, of interesting. But what a, it's a great insight because, and that's what we have to remember, right? The person who's receiving the pitch is a human being at their job trying to get through their day and get home and make dinner and help their kids with homework and do the same stuff we're trying to do. Um, and so when we just remember that, it becomes so much easier and so much more fun. 
it really is a lot of fun and and it's a fun life and you always have a good story to tell i find that's right <laughs> That's right. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about something that you wanted to bring up on the show here, which is the the um, the economic situation that our country finds itself in. Right. Sure. And depending on what day you pick up the paper, we're either, you know, headed down the spiral or we're just about to bounce back. That's and right. by the time this show airs, who knows where we're going to be? <laughs> no idea. If there's one thing that is consistent. It's that the future is unwritten. Right. Mm -hmm. So so how do we work on. Um, reassuring or guiding clients through uncertain times, whether those are economic times or maybe it's a challenge for their business. Um, I know that you wanted to talk a little bit about metrics, but let's talk about counsel to start with yeah, and sort absolutely. of guiding people to good decisions. Right. Well, I think whenever there's economic volatility, we know, and you know this as well as I, PR is sometimes the, the canary in the coal mine, right? We can We can sense when things are happening before anybody else does because we can see mar marketing budgets get tight, clients get nervous. Um, we're having conversations about rifts and how to manage those communications. So, you know, it is, uh, it's always a delicate balance. How do we help our clients? Um, how do we help them navigate through these difficult times? And I think there's a, there's a couple of different things. I absolutely think, um, you know, part of the reason we were cut historically is we have a hard time showing that ROI, right, as an industry. You know, early in my career, it's a lot of va vanity metrics, UVM, how many eyeballs saw something. That's hard to uh, quantify. And so when you've got a CFO coming in and saying, you know, what are the real results, it it makes it challenging and it's and it's flawed thinking. So we really do have to double down on that as PR people and, and counsel our clients on the ways in which we can make business impact. So how is the work that we're doing either connecting to the bottom line, um, driving through the sales funnel, building that brand recognition, uh, helping them with the competitive landscape, and just really helping them connect those dots and to be comfortable through that. Um, I honestly think uh, a little bit of a bear market is a great time to, to do PR and to sort of up up your game because you've got less noise, right? So there's more opportunity. There, there's, uh, you think about funding. A couple of years ago, was there was like a unicorn a day. Everybody was announcing hundreds of millions of dollars of funding. Um, but today you could get a story on, you know, a five, $10 million funding that you wouldn't have been able to get before. So it, it really is an opportunity um, to, to grow and be strategic um, from a PR perspective. Yeah, I could not agree with you more about the, you know, when times are tough, don't pull back on your PR messaging. Don't pull back on your messaging, period, right? Whether it's earned, owned, paid, social, whatever it is, um, don't pull back on your messaging. Don't disappear because um, when people are pulling back um, or feel like they need mm -hmm. to be pulling back, if you're not there in front of them, they're not even considering your message. That's right. And so it's kind of like benching yourself in a way. You never, ever want to bench yourself, right? Maybe you want to pivot. And I'm thinking back three years now. God, it's been three years since COVID. Um, with so many people pulled back, you know, I encouraged all my clients to reinvigorate their messaging and say, okay, let's be relevant. Let's talk about what's going on. Obviously, we're all in front of this. How do what what values do you bring? What offers do you bring? Okay, maybe some places are closed. Fine. How are you pivoting? What are you doing? Um, and how do you stay in front of your clients to make sure that they don't forget about you? Because that I think above all is the kiss of death. Is people just Absolutely. forgetting? Absolutely. It's 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 counterintuitive to us as PR people, but in their minds they're like, oh, marketing. Let, I don't know what it does. So let's. Let's rein it in. And really, that is your chance to double down. It's also your chance to really be strategic. Sometimes when things are booming, you're just executing, right? Think you've got announcements, you've got new products, you've got new things happening. But this is a time to take a step back and say, you know, what are we trying to achieve? Who is that customer? What ways have we been reaching out? And how do we want to do that the same, different? You know, what's our stop, start, continue for our organization? Um, and that's a great time to have some of those messaging conversations and just do some of the planning. So true. 
Let's talk a little bit, since you brought it up, a little bit about metrics. You know, everybody's got a different philosophy. Everybody's got a different scale of what they use. Um, I try to tell people you know, that, that um, you know, metrics are metrics. They're an indication mm -hmm. of what the direction you're headed in, but you really shouldn't go too granular. And I also warn clients that PR is not a direct line to your cash register. However, you should be able to see um, a correlation between you know, PR exposure and, and sort of the bump in your business. Um, how do you talk to clients about metrics and what kind of metrics do you use, if any? You know, I've, I've really doubled down on, on sort of driving that metric story with clients. And a lot of that comes from um, what their needs are, right? They've got to be able to go to their boss, their boss's boss, their CFO, the CEO, and say, here is the value that this is bringing. And a lot of times, um, you know, we as creatives feel value in lots of different ways, but CFOs feel it in in dollars, right? And so we have, how are we translating the impact that we're making into the language of the client? And I think you're absolutely right. You have to counsel the client that we're not going to be able to maybe um, you know, say this article sold this much of something. But what we can do is connect the dots between what we're driving. And that's what a good PR team will do. Um, they'll be able to say, this is the overall impact, or this is the impact we've seen over time. Uh, and that's that's really valuable. For our organization, 90% of my client or my staff is Google Analytics certified. So they're be, they're able to go in, look in Google Analytics. We can see website traffic. We can see that from earned and owned and paid, right? We can look at where all those things are happening. We can make specific goals. We can have goal completion. And those are all KPIs that we can work with our client. And that's the key part. Jody is exactly what you said. You've got to work with the client to say, what are your business objectives? And then how do we connect the dots between what the data tells us and what you're trying to accomplish? That is a great point to drill down on is asking the client what their business objectives are. Um, there are some clients, and we've all had them, where they sit across the table in that initial meeting and they say, I want to be in the New York Times. <laughs> and they have no idea why. <laughs> it's just a badge of honor. They want to be in the New York Times. That's right. And I, and I frequently, and sometimes I get eye rolls when I say to people, is that where your customers are? Is that where right. you're, to borrow the phrase, is that, are you fishing where your fish are? Because if you're not, what's the point of trying to get in the New York Times? Great, you can cut it out and frame it and you hang it on your wall and tell your mother, but what's the, how does that work for you, right? Exactly. Um, what is your counsel on, 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 on that? You know, and that's where sometimes data is great because I can say, wonderful, let's shoot for the New York Times and let's also get some trades for your industry, where your customers are. And then we can look and we can see the difference. New York Times felt good. Masthead looks awesome on your website. Your mom is really proud of it, driving around with it in her car. But at the end of the day, the trade publication is what drove the customers. And so sometimes being able to show the client that data makes the impact in our ability to adjust the strategy. And we can say, we all want a New York Times, a Wall Street Journal, a Forbes Fortune once in a while. So let's let's make that 15% of our strategy. And then let's really see what's driving your business. And then let's really put a bulk of our efforts into that. So smart. I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of a client that I worked for in an industry that I had never touched. And um, I, was, I got him a little bit of mainstream press for his business. But I also got him this four-page feature in a hyper- niche hmm? industry publication. And what he later informed me was it was that four page article with nice big pictures about his business and talk about his business philosophy and his customers and his company and everything that allowed him to sell his company for like 30 million bucks. Yeah. I you talk about ROI. Yeah. And that's Here's your that's ROI. Done. I, didn't even, I didn't even know that publication existed before I started work with the guy. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's amazing. No. Right. And Goes that's the to part. Show you. That's the part, right? These niche publications, that's where the target, the, the person who wants to buy his company, that's what they're reading. Um, and that's great that they were in the mainstream thing. But at the end of the day, what really got them sold was that that publication you'd never heard of. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's so, I think it's so frequently overlooked 
in us trying to get publicity or trying to get exposure for our clients is we overlook the things that are uh, that are really going to make a difference because they're, oh, they're this industry publication or this, you know, to, the audience is so small that reads, it doesn't matter. It matters what's going to turn the dial for them. Um, yeah. Great, great to hear you say that. Um, let's pivot a little bit and talk about, and this is a phrase that, that you brought up again in, in approaching the show, and I'm so glad you did, talking about a conscious capitalist, capitalism program. I am so intrigued by that phrase, and I want to hear you explain it, and I want to tell you, you to tell us what it means. Sure, absolutely. So conscious capitalism is really about, um, we're not a nonprofit. I, I want my organization to make money. I want us to do well, but I also want to do it in a way uh, that I can sleep at night and feel good and know that we're, we're giving back to the community. We're doing things that make an impact with the power that we have as PR people. We often forget about um, how powerful we are and how much we drive the narrative in the world. Uh, and it's an opportunity for us to do that for good. So in um, for organization in 2016, I'd been CEO a year um, and I you know, was thinking, what are ways in which I can make the work-life balance better? We always have that struggle in this industry. And I read this article um, that Mark Benioff was in at Salesforce. And he was talking about, he do, he's in the 1% group, they give 1% back and, and talked about giving time for his employees and so on. And I thought, well, we're certainly not Salesforce. You know, um, we're not a big organization, but what's the impact that we could have both in our communities and for the staff if we just put together a little program? And so within that year, we did some research and we give everybody 24 hours of volunteer time off that they can use for anything they want um, that they're volunteering for. They can go, you know, to their kid's school. They can volunteer in the community. Sometimes our, our teams go as a group and they take like two hours in a, on an afternoon and all go work at a soup kitchen or something together. And then we also put together this program where we support an organization that's doing good. So they don't also have to be a nonprofit, but they're doing good in the community. And we do free PR services for them for six months. So we take them basically like from the beginning of evaluating what their needs might be. And we do a whole campaign for them um, for six months to, to really help them in a way that they just wouldn't have the budget or access to be able to do otherwise. That is a terrific program. And um, it's so important, I think, to one, be giving back, because I think we all have the ability to give back on our own scale, right? Not We're not all Mark Benioff and, you right, know, in the right. Workshop Club, right? And so, and most of, us, most of us probably don't even have the ability to write even a decent sized check, right? Because we got families and we got obligations, we, you know, all that stuff. But to give back your time, your energy, your effort, um, I think super important. It's so great that you've catalyzed that within your company um, and to then help them help those deserving organizations with PR support. Um, I come across plenty of, of, of potential clients, you know, they'll call me and they'll say, Hey, can you, and we have a talk and be free. They have no budget. Right. No way. And it's understandable. They have no right. budget. Right. But they still do such good work. And, and um, I am of the mind that if, if you support people in the community, they're doing good work, you're making a better community. And okay. so Terrific that you that you are able to to do that within your company. Um, do you have any success stories? I don't want to put you on the spot here, but is there a is there a nonprofit or a group that you've helped along the way that sort of has has turned in part because of the PR support? Yeah, some of the one the one we just did for last year. We're actually going to do two th this year, thanks to the bear market. I'm like, hey, we have time, we have the bandwidth. Let's take two on. Um, let's you know really double down on this, but. Last year we did, there's an amazing um, brewery and pizzeria in Denver called Brewability, and they hire adults with uh, developmental disabilities. And it is such a cool bar. It's like a neighborhood bar. And when you go in, all the bar, all the beers on tap, they're just um, identified by color. So it allows the staff that's working there, they don't have to remember what's on tap each week, what's the IPA, you know, what's the ale. I'm going to order the red and I have the menu and I know the red's the IPA and you know, the blue is the ale. And we just tell the waiter that color. And then he comes back with our beer 
we have a great time um, in our office happy hour. And then, you know, we're supporting this community. Uh, they, last year, we were able to just get them some great coverage um, and really help them. We got some influencers out and to talk about not just that what they were doing, but that their food and beer is pretty spectacular too. Um, they have a vibrational dance floor that we got to launch. So those that are hearing impaired, you can go out on the dance floor and it and you can feel it moving under you. Um, so just some really neat things that they were doing. Uh, and it was fun for the team to work on. Those are fun stories. Uh, and that sounds like a great initiative um, and a terrific business um, given back to the community. So so deserving of, of your expertise in helping to tell the story. Um, I've got to imagine too, and we look, we both know this, right? As PR people, even it, when you're when you're representing something, uh, someone, and you're telling a good story to a reporter, you're winning in terms of the relationship with the reporter, right? So even Absolutely. though you're not getting paid, you're still getting something out of this. Absolutely, you are. And you know, I also look at it; it's an opportunity. Maybe someone on my team wants to learn influencer relations; they haven't had a chance to do that. They can shadow under someone else. This is a great learning opportunity for folks too. It's relationship building with the media with the with the community with one another too just to work on it. it feels good you know when that story runs it feels pretty spectacular that's so great that's so great and and what a great place to end our conversation on this is terrific um we are going to segue now heather into the rapid fire question portion okay. of our I'm podcast ready. if you have heard it before you know what's coming and i gotta switch these up now we've done more than 100 episodes here and i feel like these questions are getting a little old maybe after the after the show maybe you can give me some suggestions <laughs> <laughs> but but you're located in did you say denver yeah, right. I'm in Colorado Springs, but we have. All right. Yeah, we're, I'm in so Denver. let's so let's get some mm -hmm. local Denver, Colorado flavor here uh, with our with our rapid fire questions here. Uh, and this is where we uh, obviously steal a page from inside the actor studio. So uh, here we go. Rapid fire question number one, Heather. What is your favorite news source? You know, I'm old school, and I love a good New York Times print on a Sunday. It's my church. I'll sit and read it cover to cover. Every book review, every business article, I love it. Yeah, nothing nothing holds a candle in That's my right. mind. Rapid fire question number two. What's your favorite social media platform? Uh, for personal Instagram, professional, probably LinkedIn. How do you, I always ask this question. How do you use LinkedIn? How do you like to use it? Um, I love it for, to shout from the rooftops, the great work we're doing for clients, to tag them in it. Um, I also use it, we use it as a great business development tool for us as an organization. Fantastic. Rapid fire question number three, coffee or alcohol? Oh, that's easy. Tequila every time. That is specific and to the point. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Rapid fire question number four, what's your favorite on the run food? Come on, give us some Colorado flavor here. Oh man. Um, well, you can't go wrong with a handheld burrito. Like if you're heading up to the mountains and you're going to hit the ski slopes, like a good breakfast burrito every time. I find I find that East Coast pivots pizza, West Coast, and I'm gonna lump you in with West Coast, mm -hmm. but pivots burrito. That's yeah. that's been my experience. Um, and then if and then you're asking me both because I have two hands. <laughs> <laughs> and rapid fire question number five. It's not my show. It's your show, uh, uh, Heather. What do you want to be after you finish this career? Oh gosh, I've been doing it so long. Um, I love giving back. So finding new ways to continue to do that. That sounds great. Heather, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thanks for spending time with us. Please let people know how they can find you and Next PR online. Certainly we're at nextpr.com. Uh, you can email us at contact us at nextpr.com and find us on any of the major socials. Sounds good. We'll give you a shout. Thanks again, Heather. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Please remember to subscribe to the show. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the TikToks at the PR Podcast, and send us a question or a comment. Our intro is by Christopher Apple. You can find him and his fantastic photography on Instagram at Christopher underscore A-P-P-O-L-D-T. Check him out there and hire him for all your photography needs. You can find me online at Jody Fisher on all the socials and on the web at JodyFisherPR.com. We'll see you next time on the PR Podcast. Mm -hmm.